So, Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before he was crucified. And he's talking to his father. And he prays what is referred to as his high priestly prayer. And he prays that we, the church, would all be one even as he and the father are one. And right now I'm driving down a road here in my little hometown of Mount Juliet. And there is a church, and there is a church, and there is a church. And they all have different labels on them. They all have different uh, sets of beliefs. Now, the core beliefs are the same. But then there are all these little uh, idiosyncratic beliefs and doctrines. That is the thing that caused the church back over this way to be different than the church right up here on the corner. And either Jesus was playing around or living a pipe dream thinking that we could all be one or it is possible. And the church uh, loves to talk about the enemy, Satan. And of course he's very real and he does uh, want to seek and kill and destroy just as, uh, just as Jesus said he, he did. But this is the interesting thing. The, one of the greatest um, war strategies is to divide and conquer. See where I'm going with this? You've got this church back here, and this church up here, and that church right over there. Several more just outside my neighborhood. and um, But they're all divided. I don't think that was ever Christ's intention for his church to be split up like that. Um, the church is its own worst enemy, often. Sure, Satan gets in the way. Satan throws down stumbling blocks for us. But we get in our own way so many times. And we point a finger at this church over here because... Well, they have a contemporary service, and they have drums on their stage right behind the pulpit. <gasps> oh, no, not that. Or this church over here that's a lot more contemporary kind of laughs up its sleeve at the church over here that still, you know, plays organ music. And uh, people seem to... People seem to take their personal preference and confuse it with a right or wrong way of coming before God as a corporate body. You know, now i got to admit, I prefer clapping, I prefer holding my hands up, and I prefer more contemporary style music. But, you know what? I think I can spend some time with brothers and sisters who prefer organ music. And I'm pretty sure that God doesn't care what instrument we use as long as the focus is us and Him together. So, the moral of the story is, um, we need to be united, not divided, and we certainly don't need to be divided over silly things like uh, the color of the carpet, or whether we use guitars or pianos, um, or nothing, um, you know, whatever. God is particular about who we worship, and He's particular about what our mindset and where our heart is. That's why Jesus told the woman at the well, like I referenced the other day, that God seeks worshipers who worship Him in spirit and truth, uh, not based on a uh, musical instrument. So, think about that today. Think about what we can do to start building bridges between our selves and our brothers and sisters and see if uh, we can follow the guiding of the Holy Spirit to bring us all together. It's, it's never going to be perfect. It wasn't perfect at the beginning, but we're not even really shooting for that. We're just shooting for at least a semblance of unity so the world can see us for the way we are, uh, the way God intended for us to be. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the weekend that is about to begin. Pray that you'll be with us as we fellowship, 
with our fellow brothers and sisters this weekend. Father, help us to be more unified. Help us to lay aside the differences that don't matter and embrace those beautiful core beliefs that do matter. Help us to always remember to keep the main thing the main thing. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you.